Good morning, folks. Top stories to start. Here on the ground, we have Japan allegedly hiding one of their 45 tons of plutonium, claiming to have only 44 stored. Seeking to not report based on a technicality, officials say there is enough unreported plutonium in the MOX mixture to make 80 nuclear bombs. Jumping to the clouds where we're looking to NASA's Arctic Ozone Monitor featured today on NASA's Earth Observatory. Good article linked below explaining the changes we see every year. A little higher, we're taking space weather and magnetic storms here at Earth. We'll come back to that in a moment. Going even higher, all the way out to deep space for the last top story, Hubble under Chandra under the Very Large Radio Array. Scientists have captured some terrific cosmic polar jets, but are unable to account for the odd shape above it, leaning on the fact that the objects are in heavy collision and that the form may be a result of that. Let's get more detailed. We're still under watch of the Uyen candidate number 9, but the top zone can't make up his mind between the Gulf of Mexico and the Far East Pacific. Assuming he's done being fickle, we should get that development soon, likely another Mexico quake as well. Quickly now, the Asian deluge continues, especially in parts of China. The flood line on the convergence barely moves in South America. Western South Africa can probably see their next convergence line coming from offshore. Wind map shows the power low cresting Western and Northwestern Europe, but watch that same darn line fire up from Greece to Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Australia with lines cutting to the southeast at the corners and then another low sitting just about on top of New Zealand. USA, same story. Collision of differing air masses set to make temperatures, moistures, pressures, and electric potential work out their differences along the convergence line tonight. A lot of change taking place in a short time in a small space. It's a recipe for energetic storms. They should be spreading a bit more lightly north across into Canada. Coming to space weather. Second gamma ray burst in as many days was detected yesterday coming out of the Taurus constellation. Bigger news in terms of space weather, however, taking place right here at Earth. We were watching for the coronal hole stream to sweep past our planet nearly the same time as the CME that erupted during the destabilization of that megafilament. The solar wind shows CME impact first, with a simultaneous jolt to speed and density, and later we see coronal hole signatures. Little density rises, followed by rising speed and plasma temperature below in green. Speed and density are flipped up top on the SOHO solar wind data, but again, we see the CME impact first, and then some density shocks before the coronal hole speed ramp. Magnetic storm level has reached G2 with our KP of 6, clearly visible also on the sensitive meters. As for solar flaring, not much to be seen, and again, we have to blame the baseline magnetic power of the star rather than the sunspots. They're peppering center disk, and we see large sunspot groups. The northern lead is finally beta class with a mix wanting to occur behind him so badly. Meanwhile, the southern deltas have weakened, but I will call both of these gamma class. You'll be able to classify these sunspots yourself when I upload some more sun series videos today. Remember folks, six days until the mobile observatory project kicks off, Head over and check out everything we've got going on after you locate two Earth-facing plasma filament eruption threats in the incoming coronal hole and the shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.